Hello everyone. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is actually a direct acting cholinergic agonist. So it is direct acting cholinergic agonist, which mean it directly bind to cholinergic receptors and increase their response in this way what will happen there will be increase in the acetylcholine response which is being declined because of some uh, diseased condition so acetylcholine itself is a drug which is administered into the patient body so that the decreased amount of natural acetylcholine in the nerve terminals could be increased. So acetylcholine is actually a quaternary ammonium compound. Quaternary means that nitrogen present in its structure is further attached with four atoms. So it is quaternary ammonium compound and it cannot penetrate membrane so it can affect its bioavailability or effectiveness although it is a neurotransmitter of parasympathetic and somatic nerves as well as autonomic ganglia it actually lack therapeutic importance because of multiplicity of actions and its rapid inactivation by choline esterase so it is not much therapeutically important agent because it has multiple effects on other parts of body other than that it is inactivated rapidly by choline esterase and it has multiple actions on body leading to diffuse effect if we talk about its action it has activity on both muscarinic and nicotinic receptors so it can bind to both muscarinic and nicotinic receptors if we talk about this action on different organs so if we talk about heart the action of acetylcholine on heart mimic the effect of vagal stimulation now vagal stimulation is actually parasympathetic response when there is stimulation of vagal nerve it means there is dominance of parasympathetic nervous system and what it means is that there is decrease in heart rate not only this there is decrease in stroke volume when you inject acetylcholine intravenously as a result of reduction in the rate of firing at the sinoatrial node because normal activity of vagal nerve is regulated by heart by releasing acetylcholine at the SA node so when there is normal stimulation SA node release acetylcholine which cause
decrease in heart rate and decrease in stroke volume so this is what happened when you inject intravenously acetylcholine into patient's body there is decrease in heart rate and stroke volume because there is activity on m2 receptors so this is because of m2 receptors which actually decrease the heart rate now the next action is on blood pressure injection of acetylcholine cause vasodilation and when there is vasodilation as we know when this is the diameter of vessel is changed into this what happen that there is more capacity for blood or more space for blood to flow so now pressure will be decreased and space is increased but when there is less of the space for blood to flow there is increase in pressure so when there is vasodilation because of acetylcholine what happen is there is decrease in blood pressure by indirect mechanism acetylcholine activates m3 receptors which are present on endothelial lining of smooth muscles so when endothelial lining of smooth muscles having m3 receptors are being activated what actually happen there is production of nitric oxide and as we know nitric oxide is a vasodilator and this nitric oxide is actually produced from arginine which is an amino acid so this arginine produces nitric oxide and this nitric oxide then diffuses into smooth muscle cell so now this is the smooth muscle cell and nitric oxide diffuses into that muscle cell smooth muscle cell of vessel and cause the activation of uh, protein called as pkg that is protein kinase g so protein kinase g is now being activated because this nitric oxide has diffused into smooth vascular muscle cell and when there is activation of this protein kinase g what happen this lead to hyperpolarization and when there is hyperpolarization there is relaxation of smooth muscles this protein kinase g when activated cause inhibition of phosphodiesterase 3 and when there is inhibition of this phosphodiesterase 3 there is relaxation by polarization of the muscle in the absence of administer cholinergic agent the vascular cholinergic receptors have no known function because acetylcholine is never released into blood in a significant quantity but atropine which is a blocker of muscarinic receptor can prevent acetylcholine from producing this vasodilation so this is the effect of acetylcholine on blood pressure if we talk about other effects which are being caused by acetylcholine administration so acetylcholine when 
goes into GI tract, it has certain effects such as increase in salivary secretions. Not only this, it also stimulates intestinal secretion and motility. And motility is also being increased because of acetylcholine effect on GI tract. Also enhances bronchial secretions. Also increase bronchial secretions which are such as mucus. Urinary tract acetyl can increase the tone of muscles which can lead to urination. So it can cause urinary urgency. It also causes meiosis that is friction of people and this action of acetylcholine is being used therapeutically for ophthalmic surgery. In ophthalmic surgery, one person solution of acetylcholine is being administered into patient's eye so that there could be could be effect of meiosis so if you talk about the adverse effects which are being caused by this acetylcholine so adverse drug reactions include diarrhea as we have talked over here that it increased motility and increase intestinal secretion so it can lead to diarrhea not only this it can also lead to diaphoresis that is sweating when it is a side effect of some drug it is not called as sweating but it is called as diaphoresis because it is different than that of normal sweating because it is an adverse effect of some drug it can cause unnecessary meiosis if it is taken intravenously. It can also cause nausea and urinary urgency, which we have talked over here, because it can increase muscle tone of the bladder. Therefore, it can cause urinary urgency so this was all about pharmacology of acetylcholine if you have any question let me know in the comment section below and thank you for watching my videos